श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम वी आर गॉट वन गेम ऑफ कार्ड्स इन इंडिया I don't know whether that game is here in US. We call it a teen patti. Do you have that game here? Yes. What do you call that? Poker. Oh, okay. So those who can poke their nose, they're expert in that. <laughs> nose pokers. Our life is nothing but a game of this three. if we can understand these three we can sort out all the problems of life only these three things we have to understand i'll take one by one one by one when we talk about life normally what we talk about recently in one international yoga conference i delivered three lectures and uh, they are also available on i pustak is in audio form so the topic was given to me like she gave me this topic they gave me the topic simplify life so they expected i will tell them the latest gadgets you tell google uh, open the toilet door that 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 is simplifying life no that is simplifying living what we are achieving in the digital world is we are simplifying living not life life is becoming more complicated see the basic difference because what is the difference between living and life living can be changed life cannot be changed like in today's world digital world children are not born you know that they are downloaded <laughs> and the parents are two the father is google you ask him anything he'll reply and the mother is amma jan do you know amma jan amazon <laughs> whatever you want you ask amajan i want a cup of tea ding 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 so today's digital world is father is google mother is amazon and the children are downloaded so there is hardly any life only living and what is the aim that we are doing everything should be done wherever we are without putting efforts isn't it and this is where we miss the charm of life when you get everything exactly the way you want what are the challenges in life life without challenge is worse than a stone on the road one of my friend in seattle he is a software engineer he was working with microsoft so next time when i went to him he had resigned his job i said hey why he said i was getting bored the same thing every day then he said i stopped that now i had opened my own consultancy and i take challenges if anybody has to set up a company i take it as a challenge right from filing application till the product is rolled out the whole project i take and there are so many difficulties so many challenges and as a result i remain always alert and cheerful friends why the children these days why children and youngsters 
they don't have charm in their life. Because their life has become so mechanical. Whenever our life is mechanical, the charm goes away. And this I learned. One of my personal spiritual practices is this. Learn, learn, learn from every experience of your life. So, please bring the fools. He has got the flowers. Fools in English means flowers. <laughs> Thank you for fooling. Please sit down. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what we have to learn, once I went to a factory in uh, Goa, a huge uh, shed, about 400 lathe machines. And with every lathe machine, there was one labor working. And they were manufacturing the files, steel files, which are used for smoothening the rough surfaces. And their production was in huge quantity. Every alternate day, they will be um, sending goods, tanker, uh, this uh, container full throughout the world. So when I was shown that, I said, may I talk to somebody? Yes, yes you can talk to anybody. One labor I stopped there. I said, hey, if I talk to you, will your work get uh, disturbed? No, no, you can talk. He was talking to me and doing the job. He has only one operation to be done. On the belt, that piece comes, he has to put it there and give one hit. So, something happens, it goes next. That was the only job he had. I asked him, when you are talking to me, how can't you get disturbed? He said, no, this I am doing for the last 25 years. Even by closing eyes, I can do it. Then I asked, do you enjoy this? He said, what enjoy? It's boring. Then what do you do? He said, what else can I do? I had to take care of my family. I had to earn money. But then you are not enjoying, not at all. Then how do you discover joy and happiness in your life? He said, Swamiji, you are a saintly person, I will not tell you lies. Please tell me the truth. He said, when I go from here, I go to the liquor shop, get a nice booze and enjoy. <laughs> and after some time, I became so addicted to it. I can't live without it. Now, if you go to the bottom line of this story, whenever our life is mechanical. The charm of life goes away. And to create charm in our life, then we are hanging around something. And what is that something? Drinks, drugs, smoking. We want some support. We are lonely in a crowd. See, friends, that the only reason is there is no charm in life. Because we are simplifying living, we are not simplifying life. What is a simplified life? Our Indian uh, ladies, if you go in their walk-in wardrobes, uh, ward there will be at least uh, 690 saris hanging pathetically. <laughs> And whenever they get inside that wardrobe, they have to search which I should put on this, no, this, no. They go in the morning, come by winning. <laughs> because too much of choice. So to discover joy in life, give yourself a minimum choice. Lesser the choice, more the happiness. But instead of making life simplified, we are making living simplified. See the basic difference. Therefore, if we have to make the life simplified, then we have to understand what are the components of life. So there are three components. 
life has three components one the matter things second the activity and third the knowledge three things now out of this three if you just observe you take a stone or anything about this i'll tell you an example this happened in himalayas one day it so happened there was some landslide and a huge rock came and sat right in the middle of the road and the bus stop could not move so now people are thinking what to do what to do and are struggling to push but it won't push a huge rock and it started becoming dark how to go and there was one villager please come and sit anywhere except on my head <laughs> so the villager in that uh, place was observing all the educated people and uh, with all the power and everything and tried to push the rock it doesn't move and he was enjoying he was eating pan those who are happy they eat pan so he was enjoying pan and tobacco and laughing at them so when all of them failed so one person asked hey is there any hotel nearby no hotel in himalayas then where will i sleep they say sleep below the sky multi star facilities not five star so now we don't know how to go it is getting late he said i can tell you if you pay me how much what is your problem see this rock he said no rock is not your problem your problem is your bus cannot go that side of the rock is it not ha ah, that is the problem rock is not a problem i can tell you first pay my fees he took quite a good sum from them he said this is my field you take your bus through the field and whatever damage to the crop that happens that money i have taken from you and you go to the other side of the road and go ahead now see rock is heavy matter is heavy activity is lighter thinking is lightest how much a person who is doing a, a simple uh, um, heavy jobs he is paid less a person who is doing the thinking job they are paid maximum so in our life what is that which we give importance to do we give importance to the matter See? but we keep on accumulating things accumulating things and this accumulation of the things this habit of accumulation doesn't limit itself to the things only please come accumulation of the things doesn't limit there only it goes inside our system and what we do we keep on accumulating memories the past all the time living in the past we refuse to live in the present because an old habit now you all must be having whatsapp and everybody get the same rubbish stuff on whatsapp and the only thing we forward forward but we don't delete there is no need exactly the same way we keep on accumulating the past as a burden of memories on our head as a result we are not able to live in the utter present see the old people like me and like others also if they think they are old i accept i am old old people like me why they are not a good fit in the young people like this because anything that the youngsters are doing immediately old is say in our days it was not like that now we don't understand nobody is interested in our past 
people are concerned about their future. But what do I have? I have nothing but the burden of the past. See, friends, and as a result, we are unfit to live in the present. All the time, old stuff. One more example I'll give you. Process of learning. Please come and sit anywhere. Please come and sit down. I was thinking some security person standing with a gun. <laughs> so, it is not difficult. It's very simple. So, when we have decided to learn, 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 then every experience gives us a message. And the message is this. We are going by a bus again in Himalayas. Today Himalaya is coming too many times. And uh, we were going somewhere and our bus has to stop for whatever reason. And there was a um, banyan tree. And when I was looking at it, there was one sweet girl like any one of you. And uh, she said, Swamiji, what are you looking? I said, you tell me. You are looking at the tree? I said, no. Then I said, I am learning from the tree. I said, what is there to learn? I said, nobody can teach you anything in life. You have to learn yourself. Teaching is important if the learner is not ready. And everything in this world is teaching us. But we refuse to learn. So, I said, have you seen that uh, tree? What is that? See that iron uh, guard for the tree to grow properly. They have put. The tree is grown. But they have forgotten to remove the iron support. Now the tree has eaten away that iron growing around it. Is it is, I also seen that. I said, hey, what you have learned? They should have removed it. I said, don't, that is not learning, finding somebody's fault. Learn that even if you are iron, strong enough, if you don't change according to the requirement, you will be engulfed by the time. The tree is soft, is it? Soft tissue. And iron bars are strong enough. But those soft tissues could consume, swallow the iron things. Exactly the same thing. If we are not ready to learn from our experience, day-to-day -day experiences, we will only grow old and otherwise. And if we start learning from every experience of our life, we will grow wise with every experience. Now all of us talk about ego, ego, ego. But what is exactly ego? Think. Ego, egoing, egon. <laughs> it must go away. But for that we must know what is the ego. Now this also I learned from one friend of mine. Normally when I travel, I don't like to talk to people. The same rubbish stuff. Where are you from? Why are you here? Why are you born? Why don't you die? <laughs> I don't need to that. All rubbish questions. So to uh, help myself stop from those questions, I take out my rosary. Like a terrorist takes out a gun. I take out. And I tell them, my guru has told me, that whenever I am traveling, I should do the chanting of the Lord's name. So, excuse me, I will not talk, but you can talk. <laughs> if you want to make any old man happy, it is difficult, but you can try. If you want to make any old man happy, ask him or her about their past and don't listen. <laughs> 
they will keep on talking because they want listeners. That is why I am talking to you. <laughs> and what they will talk? Only about the past. So, uh, I was sitting, we were going by train and he started. I said, hey T, you please tell about you, I can't talk, I'm sorry. And I was doing the drama as if I am chanting, but I was not chanting. So, he started. We were, he, my grandfather was in such and such place. That means I had to learn, listen of three generations. <laughs> and started. He was in Baghdad and he was selling that. But then there was a problem. And then they shifted to um, Peshawar, the old India, when it was not divided. And then from there they came to Karachi. Then by then India was divided. And then they shifted to this, this. Like their story goes on and on. And finally, um, then I got settled there. I got married, the children and all that. Now what I am interested in, whether you get married or you don't get married. But they have to tell. And finally, I came. And whenever I used to see that his inspiration was going down, I used to say, hmm? Then what happened? Again. Like a pruning of a tree. Again in start, fresh. And continue. Finally, he said, my children told me that here the climate is humid. You can't stand here. So go to Delhi. It is better. And then, then they put me in this train and you are in front of me. Wow. Then what happened? Be attentive. When you come in the utter present, you have nothing to talk. Observe this. Whenever we talk to others, we talk only about our past. The net result is, we refuse to live in the present. Now tell me, do we have an option or a choice? To live yesterday or to live tomorrow? We have no choice. We have to live today. We have to live now. We have to live 100%. There is no choice. But we have trained ourselves all the time going in the past, going in the past. I was in uh, um, Newcastle in Australia and uh, I had a very good friend. He is a pharmacist. He has his own shop. So I went to their house and they had a son. Now that son is grown up. He is now also a medical practitioner. When he was small, uh, I was very tired and I ate food and slept. He came from the school at 3 o'clock and he woke me up. Swami, you have not come here to sleep. You have to play with me. He said, come on here, I am feeling tired. He said, no, he pulled me out of the bed. And let us play football. I said, if there is some brainy game I can play with you, what is the football? What you call soccer here? Yes? Football. So, he took me out. And for some time, I played a little bit here. And then I said, now enough. Now tell me something. I, I like the quality thoughts, not physical things. Physical things are only for body oriented people. Think something higher. So, yes, ask me. I said, do you go to India? Yes, every year we go. Now tell me something which is unique when you go to India or you are here. He gave me the highest knowledge in my life. He is my guru. He told, when we go to India, we talk about Australia. When we are in Australia, we talk about India. <laughs> How true it is. Why don't you live wherever you are, whenever you are, whatever you are, 100%? Think my friends, these three things matter activity and knowledge. Out of these three things, to what you give importance, that will determine the quality of your life. If we give importance to the matter, then what we will talk about? 
I have got a, um, this Rolls Royce car and I have got this thing and I have got a Bangalore and blah 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 blah. blah. And I have got a beautiful, lovely, expensive car, but only problem is nobody to sit with me. I can't go in HOV. <laughs> Then I got a king size bed, but no sleep. <laughs> I got every kind of food available in the world, but diabetes. <laughs> what kind of life it is? Instead of living life, we are simplifying life and that makes our life complicated. See my friends, we have a choice to what you give importance. See? Now, to change our importance, if we start analy analyzing our experiences, see? now one experiment we will do, it is a very simple experiment. Behind me there is a the picture, isn't it, on the wall. Look at the picture and experience, where are you? Your experience is you have gone away from yourself, is it not? Yes. You are looking at something. Now take away your vision from there and look at my beautiful face. <laughs> Come on, it's not a joke, it's a truth. <laughs> you have come relatively closer, is it not? As compared to that picture. Now, close your eyes. Is there any loss to your vision because you have closed your eyes? Stop. Open. Whether the object is there or not, does it, make any dif does it make any difference to your eyes? Like I am seeing you about 50, 60 of you. When I see 60 of you, is it a burden for my eyes? And if you become 6,000, Oh God, so many people I have to see. My eyes will be tired. No. So what is important? Objects are important or the sense organs are important. Think. But what importance we are giving in our life to the objects? First, to simplify life, first principle, get rid of your dependence on the worldly objects. Discover freedom. Lesser the dependence, more the happiness. You depend on so many things, that much you will be miserable. See? So, the first step will be the gross thing out of the three is matter. See, like one hundred dollar uh, bill is in my pocket. Now whether I give it to somebody or somebody picks up my pocket and takes away, it makes no difference to the dollar bill, is it not? It's inert. So what is important? Living is important or inert is important? When we give too much importance to the worldly matter, we carry a huge burden and that mule who is carrying the burden of the total past is called as ego. See? How important it is. But attention never goes to that. We are only lost throughout our life. What we have achieved is only the collect, collect, collect. Now we go further in our analysis. All of us, what we have done till date, only one thing. And that is, try to fulfill our desires by acquiring the things. When we are small kids, we want this, we want that, that game, this game. Now these days the digital games. 
one old Indian grandfather came to USA. And uh, he saw the USA grandson playing all the time with the real game. Like that. So he said, come on dear child, go and play outside. All the time you are sitting inside the house. He looked at it. Okay. Went out with that thing and sat out to <laughs> And how long that game will attract? Only for a few days. Then the game becomes old. Then I want a new game. I want a new game. Friends, after some time, we start living only in the virtual reality. Not the actual reality. You see the small kids I move to so many places. They will be buying all those toys of the various Serials or the games and all that. And mm, 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 what these kids are playing? Spider Man. Mm, they are themselves doing like that. Nothing is there. And the kids are playing with the virtual reality. We, the so called grown ups, we play with the virtual reality. And the net result is we forget the actual quality of our life. What is the quality of life? Only one thing. You are able to express happiness every moment. No complaints. Perfectly at home. Every place. Every time. Every situation. Three. That is life. So, the first thing we have to discover first freedom from the matter. What is necessary is necessary, but not beyond it. See? Now the second thing that we carry the burden on our mind is the past memories. Now whenever we ca carry the past memories, we are unable to adopt in the present. We have to learn the art of Adopting in the present. Our condition is like the ice cubes. They are comfortable only in the tray, which is exactly of their size. The moment they are taken out from the tray, put in a jar, everybody has got his own personality. <laughs> and if all the ice cubes, they melt into water, then they are at home in every part. Let it be a petri dish, let it be a test tube, let it be a capillary tube. Everywhere the water is at home. We are all like ice cubes, strong personalities. Let us melt into this non specific, casual, being. And where from the sharp corners have come in our personality? Because of the collection of the past things and memories. Drop them all. Now one more experiment we will do. Learn from this. I ask you a question and you try to Figure out what will be the answer. Don't give. Try to figure out. 297 days before, at 7 o'clock in the evening, what did you eat? 297. Gone? Now, second question. After 133 days at 5 o'clock in the evening, where will you be? I don't know. Now, third question. Now, wherever you are. Now, see, the moment you go in the past, you start worrying. The moment you go in the future, 
you start struggling. But when you are in the present, relax. A person who is relaxed, he alone is happy. Then, my friends, our mind becomes like a mirror. What is a mirror? Mirror reflects everything, rejects nothing and retains nothing. A mirror doesn't have past. Mirror doesn't have personality. This is the mirror in which a holy man reflected no. Let our mind remain in the utter present. See? And for that, we have to work. So, from the matter, gross one thing, to the second we come, that is working on the mind. We all work by the body and we work on the body. Two things. What is working by the, bo- by the body? We go to work and we earn our bread and butter working by the body. Working on the body, we go in the morning for jogging to reach nowhere and come back. <laughs> I am always surprised to see these morning joggers. They run to reach nowhere. <laughs> No, Swamiji, they are actually working on their body. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. (laughs) And they will be lifting the weight. Want to put it down again. (laughs) Such weight lifters, they have their um, biceps (coughs) replaced by the thigh muscles. And all the time showing to everybody, look at my muscle, look at my muscle. And how long? Maximum 24, 25 years. After that, they stop that. Then all the muscles which are accumulated, they come in the stomach. <laughs> and although they are men, they become pregnant. <laughs> now that is working on the body. So we are working by the body to earn bread and butter. And we are working on the body to keep the body healthy, is it not? Now one question I will ask you and reply of all of us is the same. Don't reply. What we have done to work on our mind? Nothing. For us, because we think, we are thinkers. We have never worked. Just look within. We have concern about our house. It should be nicely painted. All light fixtures should be good. And wall hanging should be nice. Very good. All the drapery should be matching. Furniture should be wonderful. Very good. Our clothes should be matching. Not all rubbish. Very good. We should take organic food. I don't know what is inorganic food, but I should take organic food. (laughs) And then we should have a figure. 36, 24, 30. But our figure is 62, 62, 62. Like a drum. Very good. Take care. Nothing wrong. We have taken care of everything. What care we have taken to take care of the mind and the quality of the mind. We have to work. Like here, there is nothing like free dinner, is it not? Nothing like free dinner. We have to work on the mind. And for that, first we have to recognize the importance of something. Then only we can work on it. These days, many girls who want to walk on the catwalk, although they are born as human beings, yet they want to walk like a cat on their ram. <laughs> now, if they want to walk on their ram, on that fashion parade, 
they have to have an ideal figure, is it not? Anybody cannot walk there. Now when they have that goal, how disciplined is their life? They don't eat food, they calculate calories. See, and they do exercise. Every after taking one uh, sip of tea, they stand on the weighing machine. Oh, <laughs> because they have to maintain that. If you and me are told, hey, forget about here, I don't want to walk there. I am a human being. Why should I walk a cat walk? <laughs> but they are convinced about it. The goal of my life is to be reborn as a cat. <laughs> now let us ourselves decide. See, because they have got value for it. Now, friends, you tell me, all of us have value for money. Has anybody ever said that earning money is difficult? Therefore, I am not going to earn money. No. We work. On the table, below the table, around the table, behind the table. We want money because we have value for that. Come back now. In the same manner, if you have value for your mind, then you start working for the mind. Now, one more learning. Once I had something wrong with my right toe. Big toe. This happened in India, Mumbai. And something was growing on that, on the toe. So, um, one person came, did Namaskar, and he saw that he was a doctor by profession. He says, Swamiji, what happened to you? I said, something is growing, but what is that? I said, it is called as a wisdom toe. <laughs> <laughs> Some people get wisdom tooth, I get wisdom tooth. <laughs> no, no, it is not a joke, but it is not good, you have to get it operated. I said, okay, I'll get it done. He said, no, I am a doctor, I am a surgeon, I can do it. I just start right now. So, we went to his clinic. He made me sit like this in a chair, put my leg on a stool. He gave local anesthesia. And after 15, 20 minutes, he said, now are you feeling? I said, what I am feeling? I am empty. No, no. Do you feel anything here? I said, no. Then he said, now you can see the operation. And I saw. He took the knife, cut the toe, and whatever was there, he put a scoop kind of thing, a scalpel, and took out everything. He was so happy. I mean, everything has come out. No traces left behind. It's very good. And I saw the blood coming out. He took out the thing. Then he started giving stitching. No pain. That day I discovered this principle. All experiences happen only in the mind. Experience doesn't happen to the body. And that instrument where all the experiences happen what care we have taken. If we stay in any place, don't we take care of that place where we are staying? All the experiences happen only in the mind. And if we don't know how to mind our mind, who can teach us? Such people, they are expert in blaming the world for their miseries. So if I am a husband, the cause of my misery is my wife. Yes. See, if I am a um, child, the cause of my misery is my damn dad and mom. If I am the parents, the cause of my misery is my children. If I am a neighbor, the cause of my misery is my neighbor. In short, we are all expert in blaming others for our miseries. Then what will be our approach to life? If I am a husband and I have concluded the cause of my misery is my wife, what will be my approach to life? Try to improve the wife. 
This is called as impossible undertaking. <laughs> that which can be improved is not a wife. It can be Wi-Fi. <laughs> you can increase, make it 5G. See, friends, the reason is we have never, never understood this basic principle. The mind by which we are coming in contact with the world, the mind where all experiences are happening, that mind we are not taking care. Now, what is the meaning of taking care of mind? That also we must know. Again, come to three. We only complain, my mind is disturbed, my mind is disturbed. Don't complain, work out. What is the meaning of the disturbed mind? And what is the meaning of the controlled mind? Have you ever thought about it? We only complain. Swamiji, whenever I sit for meditation, no, the mind is too many dirty thoughts come. What should I do? Don't do meditation. No, but my guru told do meditation, then do meditation. <laughs> no, but very bad thoughts come in the mind. Then what is the reason? Meditation is the reason. Don't do it. <laughs> we are expert only in complaining. Complaining is not the solution. Work on your mind. See? So, what is the meaning of controlling the mind? So, first of all, let us find out. What is the meaning of a disturbed mind? When you say my mind is disturbed, please define clearly. You will come to know our mind is disturbed in three parameters. Either our mind runs in time or our mind runs in places, or our mind runs in objects or beings or people. Three places. See, now I have been talking for last 47 minutes. Out of 47 minutes, how many minutes you have heard me? Huh? Even this is not heard. <laughs> because the mind is not here. It has gone somewhere, either in place or in time or in objects. See, I'll tell you an example about it. Once I was explaining something with my hand like this, I wanted to explain something. There was one person sitting in front and he was concentrating on my palm. I am talking some principle. He was looking at here. Then I realized he must be a palmist. I mean, it changed like this. Mm-hmm. Swamiji, why did you do like this? I said, because you are looking at my lines. I am talking to you something important, not look at the lines. But the mind is so f- funny that it is not ready to be employed in the same place on the same theme for a long period of time. We have to have this faculty where our mind is available to us in the same place for the same theme for a long period of time. Such a mind is an integrated mind. See? But we never work on it. Whenever you are disturbed, you find out, out of the three which is disturbing you. So you will come to know, either you are gone somewhere. You just observe this. Wherever we go, we don't remain there. Like, you know, pain I come over here. Um, so one person in the flight asked me, you are going to USA? I said, yes. Uh, where you will be staying? I said, I don't stay in any place more than few days. Then how many places you will move? I said, I will be moving about 17 places. In how many days? 
I said maybe about three months. Three months, 70 places. Which are those places? And <laughs> name few of them. <laughs> then he said, Oh God, I am born and brought up in USA, but I have not seen so much as much you have seen. See? Mind is constantly going from here to there to here to there. So our mind doesn't remain in the same place where we want. Second thing, our mind keeps on changing the themes. And third thing, the mind is never stays in the same place, same theme for a long period of time. Now, let us go further. When the mind is in one place, one theme for a long period of time, that is called as utter present. At this moment, what are you, when are you, and where are you? Everything dissolves. This quality of mind remains 24-7 and you play the game of life. And in this game of life, once it is played not to win, not to get defeated, but for the joy of it. Like we play with the kids. So when we elders are playing with the children, they are excited to defeat. And we elders are playing with them because there is yet time for the food to be ready. So just to keep that fellow busy, we go on playing something. And now the child is thinking that he is going to win now. And his mother tells, Swamiji, food is ready. And hey, come on, stop. Now. Let's go and eat food. No, no, now, now you have to complete the game because he is winning. And for me, it was just a time pass. It doesn't matter whether I win or defeat. See, friends, in the same manner, we learn this art. We are in this world only for one purpose. And that purpose is, we are the counters to distribute and disseminate happiness and joy wherever we are. Then something happens within us. That charismatic personality is born. And my friends, everything is in every one of us. We don't have to borrow anything from outside. It is something like there are two pieces of iron exactly looking same. And there are two containers having iron files. You put two of them into those compart- uh, containers and they lift them out. One is having a lot of iron files stuck to it. Other is alone. What will be the conclusion? One is a magnet. Other is an ordinary piece of iron. Now if we want to change the ordinary piece of iron into a magnet, what you have to do? Simply rub that ordinary piece of iron along the magnet in the same direction, slowly, slowly, what will happen? All the disarranged molecules, they will be rearranged and the dormant, non-manifest magnetic power will be invoked in that piece of iron, is it not? That magnetism is not injected from outside. It was very much there. Exactly the same way. We all have this capacity to be 
extraordinary. But our condition is like the iron piece. Knowledge is contradicted in action. Actions are contradicted in knowledge. Net result, our personality is disintegrated. Now watch within yourself. Knowledge. Early to bed and early to rise is the way to be healthy, wealthy and wise. Knowledge is there. Action. Late to bed and late to rise is the way to be unhealthy and otherwise. <laughs> what is the net result? Our personality is disintegrated. Respect your knowledge in your life. See, when we do not respect our own knowledge in our life, unknowingly what happens, you know, we lose self-confidence. There was one lady in uh, Illinois. She was a doctor by profession. And I used to stay with them. She said, Swamiji, can you please help me? I said, for what? Don't ask me money. <laughs> no, money is not their problem. The problem is, I cannot wake up early in the morning. How can you get up 4 o'clock? I cannot wake up. What can you help me? I said, okay, I will stay in your house throughout my life. In the morning, 4 o'clock, when you wake up, go to the fridge, take out cold water and put on your head like Abhishek on Lord Shiva. Om Trambakam Yajamahe Sukandim Pushtivardhanam Swamiji, you are making fun of me. I said, there is no need. You are sufficiently self-funny. <laughs> now tell me, a person who cannot leave the bed in the morning by his or her own choice. What can such a person achieve in life? Can't we have that confidence in ourselves? Now you just try this one principle, see what difference it makes. If you want to wake up early morning, you will have to retire early before night. And when you go to sleep early, all unwanted exposures to all unwanted themes on the internet and uh, YouTube and movies completely dropped. Be attentive. We take care of our food quality. What is the food for the mind? Thoughts. And what kind of thoughts we give to the mind? You will see anywhere the children playing. What is their game? There is no other game. See, when I was coming from London yesterday, in the flight, I was seeing one movie. For 10-15 minutes I saw, they stopped it. The name of the movie is Oasis. And it is a movie wherein the boy was just playing, you know, that thing and they put on a, a virtual reality. And he gets so much involved in that, so much involved. He forgets the actual life and living only in the virtual life. See, we create that kind of situation for us. Because when you are not going to sleep, all unwanted things we see. Friends, if you are seeing a horror movie and go to sleep, Bhagwan Krishna will not come in your dream. Only a ghost will come. Oh, oh. Whatever, if you have taken a lot of garlic and onion, you will not get the belching of a fragrance. Ah, that dirty thing only will come out. What kind of food we give to the mind? See friends, therefore, if we understand this principle, that we have to give good food to the mind. And the good food is that. Best food, I tell you. We should be at peace with ourselves.
are we peace with ourselves? Those who are not at peace with themselves, they cannot be at peace with others. <coughs> they will be always finding out faults and shouting at others. See? Like there was one case recently, one boy sued his parents, why did you give me birth? See, my friends, therefore the three things which Mama has asked me to talk, one is matter, second is activity, and third is knowledge. So our activity should be guided for controlling the mind. And two things I will try to tell you, see if you can practice it. But I guarantee you, you will not do it. Because it is very simple. If I tell you, do the headstand position and walk one kilometer, you will do it. But what I am going to tell you, you will not do it. See the confidence that I have. <laughs> First thing, before we talk to anybody in the groups like this, when the group like three, four people come together, they start talking. When we talk to anybody on anything, ask a question to yourself. Is it necessary to talk? You will see 99% cases we talk when it is not required. See? And what we talk about the past. Suppose somebody tells, hey, I was coming there and there was an accident on the road, that poor by the motorcycle fellow, he was dashed by a car. The story is over. Do you think others will give quiet? This is nothing. When I was coming, you know, one big 18-wheeler uh, tanker came and dashed the car. He adds himself. So, my accident is bigger than your accident. Third person, this is nothing. I saw a train coming and dashing that 18 wheeler truck, which was so horrible to see. Next one, this is nothing. I saw a plane coming and, and, and was it necessary to talk? Be attentive. We want to get involved into discussions. It's not necessary. Remain in the present. So try this. Lesser we talk, less mistakes. More we talk, more mistakes. Don't you talk, no mistakes. If you are keeping quiet and people think that you are dumb, it is better than to give them um, a certification that you are dumb by opening your mouth. Mm -hmm. Try this. Second thing, stop talking to yourself. Do it next 30 seconds. Do not talk to yourself. Now, what did I tell you? Don't talk to yourself. Did I tell you, don't talk among yourself? <laughs> when you don't talk to yourself, you don't want to talk to the world. But those who can't contain themselves, they want some place to vomit. And this is how all our energy is lost. I'll give some for calculation purpose, understanding. Eight hours of physical work is equal to one hour of talk, energy consumption. 
8 hours of talk energy consumption is equal to 15 minutes of thinking as the fuel becomes purer and purer is more expensive the kerosene and the avian fuel and how much energy we waste in this unwanted uncalled for thinking and then we complain on the top of a multi-story building they wanted to pump the water to fill in the tank and they were doing it water was not going as much they expected very little drip drip then they started complaining oh the pump is not good people are taking money in the bad there was one wise man he said don't do that let's check it and then they saw the pipe that pipe was holy many holes so all the water that was going up was leaking through those holes my dear friends we are infinite potentiality all our potentiality gets leaked out through the sense organs through the organs of action and it never reaches the top plug all these holes save your energy and then graduate from matter to the activity activity to the knowledge when we have to praise somebody what is the best praise oh he is a wise man of the town do we say oh he is a fat man of the town no see my friends therefore these three things we have to keep in view let us not guess long get lost in matter only but to rise above work on your mind and when you work on your mind you learn the art of making the mind available to whatever you do whenever you do for whatever length of time you are needed with freedom our condition is actually you know i want to do but i can't what should i do complain what else can we do in one municipal office there was a board um if you have complained put them here and that here they have shown the arrow and the complaint box was near the ceiling <laughs> complaints don't solve the problems you have to work on it om purnamada purnamidam purnaat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om